Welcome again, folks. We're about ready to start putting this here air suspension on the rear. Um, but before we get into that, because we are going to try to get a little in depth as to what we're doing and how we're doing it, um, I got the front end put back together, got all the brakes put back on, brakes, calipers, not calipers, well, yeah, uh, but got new rotors and pads put on there. Um, and if you are, if you haven't seen the last video or a couple videos ago, go check it out. But if you are in need of a repair manual, a service manual, uh, there'll be a link in the description. Go check that out. And um, let's see, I did also the front output of the uh, transfer case was leaking. So I did put a new uh, seal in that. And that's, that's good there. A um, couple things left to do on the truck is I got to um, definitely need to fix the windshield uh, that's one thing and there's something else that i was thinking about i can't remember right now but oh ac ac needs uh, some attention so all right on to what we're this uh video is going to be about to piggyback off the last video a little bit um we obviously have our suspension set up how we how it needs to be we are low we, you know the axle is located where it should be hopefully um and the purpose of a four link suspension a parallel four link um, since that's what we have here is it does several things. Obviously we're locating the axle front to back. That's what it does. Um, it also controls, uh, wrap in the axle, if you will, under acceleration and braking, you, your axle will tend to wrap a little bit, um, or deflect and you'll change the pinion angle slightly here and there. And sometimes your axle will have the tendency to, to jump, if you will, um, under hard acceleration. So it's, it's kind of like adding a track bar is that what uh like adding a track bar to at least spring setup it gives that extra stability and limits axle wrap under acceleration and then obviously we have our pan r bar which controls our lateral movement side to side um it, it makes sure that it does not move so to add to our pan hard bar here um the reason I, I did what i did here was because i already had these more or less set up in the computer so all i had to do was load the file and click cut again um but ideally, we want to get our, our panhard bar as level as we can to, uh, you know, it doesn't matter where it's at. We just want it to be as level. So that way, in our, in our range of travel, there's not a lot of deflection um, side to side. But we, we aren't crazy on our angle here. I'm not worried about it. Um, we're, this is going to be a ride height truck, meaning we're going to be adding a leveling, a leveling uh, valve to this truck. So we're not gonna be changing, we're not gonna be riding way down low and then we'll be able to jack it up or anything. It's gonna be set at a, a certain height and then we'll have a dump feature so we can drop it to get up under a trailer or something like that. But overall, we are just, it's gonna be set at one height. So this is where the truck is gonna ride um, no matter what. So I'm not too worried about the uh, the Panhard bar. It's We don't have a lot of angle in it. Ideally, um, you know, you wanna get it, get a longer a longer bar and get it as level as you can then it will work much better but i'm not uh, i'm not worried about it on to the bracketry so i know somebody's going to say you know this is supposed to be simple and here you are using a plasma table um that's true but the first suspension i did if you want to go way back in, in videos it's another second gen i didn't have i didn't have a plasma table i, didn't, I don't even think i had a plasma cutter then and i just used the torch and uh cut everything out used the grinder fit everything up I made I made do with what I have. I now have a few more tools in my uh, in my arsenal, so therefore I have this ability to where I can go on the computer and I can cut out stuff like this. But so what I'm doing here with the bags, um, I've got these brackets cut, and they are a little they're slightly off center of the center line of the axle, maybe by an inch, inch and a half, something like that. Um, but I'm moving them back so that I can also so I can clear the uh, the bolts here to get our link link bolts in and out. And I'm going over top of these. So these are, to the top of this is about three inches. I'm going, um, this is a four inch bracket. So we should have plenty of room to clear our bars in the front here. We shouldn't have any binding or anything like that on there. Um, so moving the, uh, so real quick, moving the bag behind the axle, the only real major downfall, as long as everything is is built structurally sound, the, the biggest downfall is uh, really, you're just wearing out your bushings a lot faster here. You can mitigate mitigate that by adding some uh, limiting, you know, adding a bigger bolt so there's more surface area on the actual bushing. But that's really the biggest downfall. As long as everything else is is uh, 
you know, up to coat or not up to coat. As long as everything else is uh, beefed up enough, there's really no bad wet or bad uh, design to put them behind the axle. They really just wear out everything here a lot faster. And that's, that's really the biggest complaint. Um, and by doing that, it also changes your pinion angle slightly the more the bushings wear out. So um, if you remember the, the last, um, or there's several, uh, several, several, several videos ago, um, we did one, put the, put the bags behind the axle, and uh, I mitigated that by adding um, some bigger sleeves on the inside. Used the same size bolt, but I just uh, took away some of the bushing material so that there's more surface area for it for it to uh, ride on that that helped out a little bit um moving on to the bags here before i go over these um the way i'm going to be setting this up is i want to try to get the the bags out as far as i can that uh, will do a couple things mainly it's just to provide the most stability um the most the least amount of roll side to side but it's also um a means of clean you know cleaning up the inside of the between the frame that way for other activities i'm going to be trying to add this sway bar off a of forward onto here um, if i can't find a, a dodge one that that matches up but basically it gives us more room inside of uh of here to do other things and it cleans up the inside but mainly it just provides the most support side to side um you know think of it if you put, if you mounted one bag or two bags right in the middle there would be a lot of there would be a lot of play side to side um, there'd be a lot of roll in the vehicle, if you will. So the way I have this set up, um, it's going to be basically going nice. So the way I have the bag set up here is I'm going to be matching the bottom of this here frame. So there's like a little step down, but we're going to be matching going on the outside here of the frame. And then we'll be adding our gussets up here to take care of that. But we definitely don't want to be, uh, we don't want to go so far out to where we're gonna be interfering with whatever wheels or tires you're gonna have on it. Um, I think I'm gonna go with 12 and a half wides eventually on here. These are 285s. Um, so I just wanna make sure I leave enough room to where if I do add a bigger tire that they're not gonna interfere with, uh, with the bags in any way. So lastly here, these are gonna be the bags we're gonna be using. I will link them down below. Um, they are from Vigor. This time around, they reached out to us a little while ago and provided us with some air springs to use on an upcoming project. And here we are. Um, these are like the same, uh, these are essentially the same bags that Kelderman uses on their rear suspension. Um, that's the, the bellows number and all that is very similar. Um, they seem like pretty decent quality and uh, I don't see why they, they, there's no reason why they won't work. And that's what we're gonna be using on this here project. So. Um, if you're interested, there'll be a link below. Uh, I will also try to remember to add in some other previous bag um, that we've used on the back here, but I see these uh, working out just fine. So one thing also to add with the bags is uh, we need to figure out our minimum and our maximum height in order to achieve um, the proper spacing on our, on, our, on our height here so that we're not bottoming out whenever we hit a bump and we're not overextended where we're running too much pressure in the bags and so on and so forth. So if I'm being honest, I don't really know the proper um, the way to set these up. I just figure out I have a minimum and I have a maximum and I try to shoot for the middle. So that way, at least I know I have, say, three to four inches of travel down and a little bit more up, per se. Um, so if I remember right, these bags are about three and a half fully collapsed, three and a half to four. And our extended height, I think want to say, is like um, 12 inches, thereabouts, 11 and a half, 12 somewhere in there. So if we're shooting for the middle of that, we're gonna be about eight inches, which is what we have here basically. And if we're doing the math here, I've got a foot, if you remember right, I've got a foot from the bottom of this frame to the top of the axle. And I'm taking out four inches here and that leaves me with eight inches. So that's where about where I wanna be. Um, and if it doesn't work, then we will figure it out from there. But that's what I'm doing, um, use that accordingly. Let's get to work. Up here on the frame, we're level. I cheated it. 
um, slightly to the to the front. Basically, it's leaning forward in the front a little bit because um, whenever we get our load on here, it's going to want to you know take the slack out of the bushings. So I just kind of cheated a little bit. We can obviously take it out later with our adjustments on our link bars, but I did it now. But I just got it tacked up here right now. Sabotage the framing square here so that we can get our measurement off the side of the frame. So that way um, we can get our top plate fitted up as well. Um, but basically from, from this frame out to the center of it, which is right here, these two bolt holes in our case, um, got that so I can get it centered up on the outside. And we're cutting it close. I may have to modify, I might have to go in a little bit. We're cutting it close to, uh, to being a little too wide. Let me put the bag in there and see. So I did kind of cheat it out a little farther too, just so, because I knew that uh, I was measuring off the top of this here. Um, there's a little dip in the frame, if you can tell. I know the sun's kind of at a bad time right now. But uh, I may just cut it off a little bit and just start and just cheat it in slightly. I think that's on the verge of being enough room, but we also have to count for flex of the axle <clears throat> and coming up into here. So definitely going to go in with it. I may also, um, I don't know what wheels I'm going to be running yet. I don't know if I did get, get rid of the spacers, um, the three inch ones. <clears throat> so I may, um, I don't know if I'm going to stick with the stock wheels for now, or if I, I do have some other aftermarket wheels that I could um, put on here, but we'll see what we're going to do, but definitely just want to make sure we have enough room here um, so we can run whatever tire option we need. The sun's at a not so great angle here, but uh, we've got everything configured. We're looking pretty uh, pretty good as far as um, alignment and fitment and all that. I'm happy with it. Um, I added these little gussets down here on the axle to uh, help with um, to help with side to side play in the uh, bag brackets there. Um, now I'm going to start working on building uh, building the gooseneck that's going to go in here. So. Um, Basically, I made one before for a second gen. I got two pieces of 3 16 um, square tube. And the cross member, if you can see, there's one that went here. And there's one that went here. So we just need to stay within those uh, parameters. And we'll put a couple bolts on either side. And uh, that'll obviously also help with strengthening our, uh, our wrap here on the top. I may also mount a cross member between the frame here. So that way I have a place to mount my... Um, leveling valve here but we'll get to that whenever we, uh, we get there so we'll start with cutting a couple pieces i had to salvage um, this piece off of something i made for uh, to tear down the building a while ago so gonna get this cut and then um, start making our apparatus here
So I'm fixing to uh, temporarily put this together so that we can test it out, try it out. Um, I want to get the truck further into the shop because I'm working on the back end now. When I started, I was working on the front and then tore it apart and it's been like that ever since. So I want to get it on air, get the jacks out of it, test it out. I got the top brackets tacked up better. Um, probably wind up putting a support between them eventually. But just going to try it out now and uh, air it up, see how it does, push it forward. and We'll go from there. All right, so we're maxed out, not maxed out, but we're pretty uh, pretty far up there for where we're gonna be. Um, but got the jacks out of it from back here. Let me move this one. Front end sitting on the ground. Back end, we're gonna let some air out now. Go back down to our normal ride height. It should be about there. goes right there for now. I'm gonna go down full bump. So we're all the way um, down now sitting on the bumps in internally and it's more than I thought here. We're at like five and a half. So we may we may be in trouble, I'm not sure. I'm gonna measure this. We got nine and a half. Let's go up. Let's check our measurement. So we're at 11. We may we may be okay. Maybe be okay on the on the adjustment. I'm gonna say that's about 12. So yeah, right there, right there, we're sitting where we were. The tire on the front is slightly narrower, um, and I think a little bit smaller than this one here. This is a 285. That's 265. Um, so we got a little bit of height difference, but overall we're sitting, we're sitting pretty good. Um, I may, uh, I may pull the pan hard over just a little bit to, uh, compensate. Yeah. Cause we're, we're leaning, not leaning, but we're slightly, uh, lean or, uh, kicked over this way a little bit. So I may just, uh, pull the, uh, pull the pan hard in just a little bit, but all in all, I'm happy with that. I think there should be plenty of travel in these. Let's uh, let's give it a test. With no shocks, it's bouncy. I think we should be good with that. So, um, I got somewhere to be right now. So we will we'll pick up this pick up with this. Uh, at a, a little bit later time and see you then. Picking up where we left off yesterday. Um, I've been messing with this for about an hour now, just kind of checking things out and making sure what we have here is gonna work. And it's kind of right on the verge of not being good enough, let's just say. Um, it'll definitely work as it is, but I, don't, I didn't have as much travel um, as I thought I did, basically because I thought the bags collapsed more than they, than they do right there. Um, but our 
collapse tight on these bags is uh, about five and a half and overall extension is about um about 12 inches give or take so <clears throat> i was hoping that i could be um have a little more down it it's it's in the parameters where i think it'll work so we're going to do what um anybody should do and we're just going to roll with it uh if i would have measured if i would have knew better about these bags i uh, i would have brought these brackets up here just a little bit just to give us an extra inch or so of travel but overall um i'll still be able to i've got enough travel with how we have it set up right here to where um i'll be able to you know whatever trailer i'm hauling i'll be able to drop drop the air and i'll be able to get up underneath gooseneck um and that's just over the accident on the back where we're because we're pivoting i definitely have more travel on the rear so that's not an issue um and i think we should be fine as far as travel up and down we should have plenty let's go ahead and put some air in them here and see if let's see check that so that's about where it's gonna be um so yeah i have i have enough travel to get out from underneath the trailer um i think i have plenty of travel down I can bounce up and down on this. Everything's just tacked, mind you, but uh, I think it should be fine. I've got new shocks on the way. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mount. I already have a tank from a uh, previous uh, setup. Go ahead and get the tank mounted on here. Uh, I'm gonna probably add a brace in here for our suspension to kind of keep it from flexing, and then I'll mount the leveling valve to that probably. And then that should be it minus getting the compressor i thought about i was trying to figure out how a way to mount a secondary air or ac compressor and then convert it to an air compressor um but i just don't think i want to mess with that right now i'm just going to go with the with the uh, 12 volt pump but that's the only thing that i don't have that will more or less limit us from more or less getting this stuff wrapped up uh this evening uh I am gonna, like I mentioned, I'm gonna try to add a sway bar to this. So that is also something probably work on here shortly. And basically get this done. So that way after this video, we'll be able to uh, take everything apart and start cleaning everything up and get prepping it for paint. So if I forgot to show this yesterday, this is the part number for that bag there. So there you go. I have mostly everything laid out here. The last couple things are the compressor, which isn't a big deal. We'll either weld a bracket on after the fact or uh, just bolt it in somewhere. This here, I put two bolts in it. I think that's plenty strong enough there. Um, this is where my dump valve will go. Obviously the leveling valve. I did just hook it up, make sure everything worked. Um, I don't have the air hooked up to it right now, but dump valve's working uh the 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 let's see here i'm gonna see if i can find a factory track bar in the next couple days and go from there because it'd be a whole lot easier just trying to just rather than me trying to weld more brackets on just go ahead and get one that already bolts up to the uh brackets down there and then i can just make something to hook it up here to the frame so i'm gonna wait on that and over here i just need to figure out the parking brake, which I have this that I cut off a uh, another truck that I picked up, parts truck. 
So I think what I'm gonna do, basically it's it's okay where it's at, it's just rubbing over here. So I think I'm just gonna weld this basically in the same spot, just down and back a little bit, and then I'll brace it, and then that way it'll bolt up where the factory spot is right here. Um, no harm, no foul there. And then, other than that, we're pretty much we're pretty much good to go. If you've got any comments, questions, concerns, um, drop them down below. I hope I was able to help somebody out here, or at least give you an idea as to what to what what to do, what to look for. Um, pretty straightforward at this point. Again, building off the last video, if you were going to use coilovers, it would be so much simpler to use coilovers here. Um, you know couple brackets there a couple brackets there and you're done you don't have to worry about all this air plumbing or whatever but i want the ability to be able to drop the back end down so that i can hook a trailer up um but yeah we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here so that way kind of keep it separate from the next part which is going to be tear down and painting and stuff like that so we'll be uh we'll be doing that here shortly but i just want to say thanks for watching and uh if i can help you out at all send me an email leave a comment We'll see you all in the next video. Thanks, guys.